So thank you and good evening. And thanks very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to the extraordinary class of 2020. In 1957, right around the time I was born, a writer by the name of Alan Saunders penned a phrase in a short story that is still repeated to this day. Life, he said, is what happens to us while we are making other plans. It's hard for me to imagine another graduating class of high school seniors for whom this sentiment could possibly be more appropriate. In-class classes, spring sports, spring theater, senior shows, senior proms, a chance to say goodbye in person to the teachers, coaches, and staff that have made your time in high school so special. These are just a few of the time-honored traditions and rites of spring that this year's seniors have had taken away by the coronavirus. Add to that the loss of traditional graduation ceremonies, and the takedown is totally complete. Now, as the father of three children who were able to enjoy the final few months of their senior years of high school here in the Commonwealth, I feel terrible about how this has all played out for you. This is not the fond farewell you earned or you deserve. But life, as Alan Saunders would say, had other plans. So what can I say to the class of 2020 to make any of this sting a little less? Well, let's start with this. The three times I graduated were not particularly memorable at all. I don't remember who spoke at my high school graduation. I know that German Chancellor Helmut Kohl spoke at my college graduation, but I have no idea what he said. And General Motors CEO Roger Smith spoke at my business school graduation, and I don't remember what he said either. Now, I do remember fondly my spring sports season in high school, the final conversations and the goodbyes and good lucks that I shared with my coaches and teachers, school administrators and classmates, and I remember my senior prom. But what sticks with me the most were not those final moments. It's the papers and projects that I worked on with my teachers and classmates that really grabbed my attention. The friendships that I made that remain with me today. Pretty much the whole package of my time growing up. From middle school through high school and the ups and downs that came with all of that. I also remember having no idea what to expect from that point forward. More of the same, something different. How would I do when I began to write the next chapter of my life. Looking back on my own experience from that point forward, I think you should know that the next chapter, as crazy as the conclusion of this one may seem, will be more complicated. You're now young adults, and the choices you make will be, more so than ever before, yours and yours alone. The consequences in both directions will belong to you as well. So do yourself a favor and make good choices. Now, I know that seems pretty simple, but it won't be. I can almost guarantee that at some point in the next few years, you're going to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what was I thinking? And the answer will be, you weren't. Many years ago, I was at a party when I was just a little older than you. We were in somebody's basement, the ceiling was low, one thing led to another, and the next thing I knew, we were all jumping up and down and hitting the ceiling tiles with our heads. We weren't breaking them, just dislodging them. Pretty smart, right? Anyway, I went up the fourth or fifth time when it was my turn and smashed my head into a beam in the ceiling that ran right above the ceiling tiles. I saw stars, got a bump on my head that was sore for over a month, and I was darn lucky I didn't break my neck. That was an incredibly bad choice. And to this day, I thank God the only price I paid for it was major embarrassment and a monster headache. In retrospect, I probably deserved a lot worse. Second, don't be afraid to reach beyond your grasp for things you believe are important and be willing to do the work. The artist Michelangelo once said, that the greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. Michelangelo is a genius, but it was his drive and his determination to follow through and finish the job that brought his genius to life. It took him four years to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Four years. 
and it took him two years to sculpt what is now known as the David, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, pieces of sculpture ever. And he did this between 1501 and 1512, using what we would all call primitive tools to get it done. Third, make good friends and seek out and appreciate those mentors who will help you grow. Most of us will end up as a reflection of the company we keep. Your friends will define you in ways you can only begin to fully appreciate. The good ones will buck you up when you're down and surprise you with their kindness and their loyalty when life hits you in the gut. They may not feel like role models, but they will be, just by virtue of how they act day after day after day. And the great ones will help you grow by simply being who they are. And I suspect you already know what a mentor is all about. Now, my mom and dad sit at the top of that list for me. Their 60 years of marriage, and especially the last 10, when together they battled my mom's Alzheimer's disease with humor and grace before she died, will always be with me. They played the hand they were dealt like champions, and my brothers and I had ringside seats to witness the whole thing. Parents, teachers, coaches, bosses, coworkers, friends. The great ones will challenge you and help you grow because they see something in you that can make you great. They will pick you up when you fall, they'll hug you when you need it, and they'll call you out when you deserve it. Grab onto them and never let them go. Because when I think back on all the stuff that's happened in my life, the ups and the downs and everything in between, the things I could control and the things I couldn't, the times I tried and succeeded and the times I tried and failed, what I remember most are the people I shared the best and the worst of times with and all that time in between, the things they said and did and how they made me better than I would have been without them. Coronavirus is here for now and it will be a story that you can tell in whatever way works for you for the rest of your life. But it does not and it should not define your future. You, along with those you bring along for the ride, will make that happen. Make good choices, strive to be great, put in the work, and appreciate the people who will help you become your very best self. That's what will last and that's what will matter most as you write the next chapter in your extraordinary life. God bless and good luck to the class of 2020.